I just had it set up, he said. <laughs> Who the fuck set this up? Hey, look. Is that a setup? Look at the angle these things were at. New strings and recently set up. That's what he said. Dude. The fuck? What kind of a fucking setup is that? Okay, here's a crazy thought no one's ever had, ever. Until I had it. <laughs> Used guitars are more fun. Because almost always, they come with some sort of a story attached to them. In this case, hey dude, this bus stop, this is yours as well. Because, you know, this guitar came with that from factory. Which I checked. Of course, not true. In fact, I don't think any Fender ever came with one of these abominations, but he gave it to me. Said he had it removed when he recently had this thing professionally set up before putting it up for sale. Professionally set up. I think it looks great there. And look, it still works. <laughs> Whatever, fuck it. I just thought about, you know, sharing this cute little nice adventure which is getting used instruments, mostly for reviewing purposes or whatever, just trying stuff. What? Look, look, I mean, gorgeous guitar and it's absolutely fucking mint. So whatever, I'll set it up right and see if I review it or something, if it's worth it, if, I don't know, if I think there's something worth talking about with this guitar. Got a lot of upcoming reviews that I keep saying I will do and never get around to, like, that one's coming, that bass, that's, you know, that bag is coming as well. It's that guitar as well, and some other stuff I don't have anymore, but that I filmed and wrote about and never got around to doing it, but whatever, they're coming. There's lots of them, in fact, like, oof, a lot of them. Just looking at the list right now. Anyway, fuck it, this was supposed to be short, and by all means, it hasn't been. All right, I'm out. Look, look, see how that's, that's, how's it go here? Then you have 11, <laughs> a bit more. Ah, this one's pretty much the same. Yuck, it's gonna be work to do, of course. Dangle, 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 it does click in, but still, this one kind of, yeah, it's not very convincing. And then you got this. This one's a beaut. Let me turn you around so that you get better lighting. There you are. Look. Filthy animals. The, the fuck is this? What What's this? Is that supposed to be probably strong? Like, what is that? Half a turn? Over the whining? Dude, what? Really? It's clean as shit. But it was true that he wasn't playing it. This did. This is barely played. It's really clean. No major scratches or anything. Anywhere. I forgot the strap pins. I removed the strap locks and forgot to put the strap pins at home. Dude said he would be mailing them. I have no reason not to believe him. Yeah, that's where he filled them up. To put on the strap locks and yep you forgot to put the original ones back yeah whatever i have spares but i trust he'll be bringing back the ones that i'm owed i'll bring them back send them you know this is a number probably tracking something i will never stop loving this number
Now here's a quickie for all those who have this issue on fender offset bridges and you push it in and it just moves around so you smack it with a hammer in hopes of bending it just enough so that it makes contact in here. You filthy fucking animals! That's not the way you do it, you just get some pliers and slightly apply a bit of pressure. Same with the other two. A bit of pressure. Slightly. Be delicate. This is a great design. You don't need to fuck it up. And now, there you go. See? That's it. You don't smack your guitar's bridge with a fucking hammer. And come on. Stop watching stupid horseshit on the internet and listen to this horseshit instead. <laughs> These holes aren't big enough. The bridge can't barely rock back and forth. Fender, I love you, but please stick to the original design. It works. Right? See? Not big enough. So I finally dislodged these two saddles, which, you know, the screws were like popping out since these height adjustment things were way too high. So the whole thing was stuck back there. And now this professionally performed setup looks like a nice smile. So I guess we're all happy now. Peace. Ah, and by the way, all this dirt and fucking goopy substance, it smells heavily of mineral oil, but it's not WD-40 or anything like it. It it's, seems a bit more dense. Maybe because it's been there for an eternity. Definitely nice way to trap a bunch of dirt and dirt and shit underneath the bridge. So yeah, definitely a pro. This is a pro's work. Another tiny detail I found here, which I it's kind of odd, is this greenish bluish substance on the height adjustment screws on the saddles. Which I, at first I thought it was sulfide or something like that, due to humidity, oxidation, who knows, but it seems more like Loctite, maybe? Like somebody heard some rattling and tried to stop it, which I find odd, because I don't think we get it down here, and I have no idea what it could be, might be something else, or maybe it was from factory, but see the one next to this one, it's got nothing, it's like somebody just chose to use Loctite at random? I don't know, I don't think it comes from factory, I'd never heard of it, but if anybody knows about that, please let me know. Because I don't know why you would just put it on some screws and some not. Weird. These are barely worn, barely played frets. Quite clean, quite nice. This is as close as you get to never play before. If it wasn't for the fact that there's slight signs of, you know, fretware, barely visible, and a few scratches on scratch plate, but other than that, I mean, you know, this guy really washed his hands a lot and had a very light touch on the left hand, or he it was true that it just wasn't his style and he never played it. This is as clean as it gets on a used guitar. Cool. But these, these are great looking frets. That's what just a few minutes of work will get you. Something you should do on every single used guitar and a few new ones as well. Shiny and soft to the touch frets. I just use a little bit of masking tape and a, some steel wool. Those more specialized tools, but just a few minutes of work, so damn worth it. Just look at that shine. And yes, there's still a few tooling marks on top of the frets, but you can't really remove those without the proper tools and, of course, taking material off the top of the frets, which would shorten their life, which we don't want to do because you can't really feel them. All you want to do is just get them smooth and shiny like this. Just look at that. That's a pleasure to play on. Bands are much easier. Go to yourself to try it. Well, I, for one, am very happy they tested it. That's the least they can do before it leaves the factory, I guess. So good for you, Fender. Good for you. Also, neat and 
tidy wiring. Good job! On the reflection over there, you can see we have 500k pods all around, as opposed to the more traditional 1 megon pods you get on most Jaggers and Jazz Masters. But to be fair, 1 megon pods play a big role into shaping the typical Jagger sound, that piercing, almost nasal kind of sound you get due to the heavily pronounced resonant peak on the frequency response. Actually, the reason why I kept the 1 megon pods on my Jagger because I tried lower values, tried 500 and 250, and it just wouldn't sound like the same guitar. Just it stunk. But on this one, I don't know, maybe it's because of the pickups, who knows. These work just fine, and they come with the added bonus that as you roll down the volume, you get to keep quite a lot of the treble, which is not the case when you have one megon putts. Either way, I'm still gonna install a treble lead, but you know, it's gonna be way easier to design around 500k putts compared to one megon putts. That was definitely not fun at all. And you can also see the extra 56k resistor that's usually around here on the tone control it's gone as well as most of the fiddly toggly bits there's just your regular three-way switch and a split for the humbucker which i guess makes sense with the philosophy of this guitar which is just a more straightforward modern simplified version of the jaguar but i mean it works for this i still like all those extra controls but just it makes sense to just have this more simplified you know layout for the electronics now here's this small stupid detail that caught my eye, is that they actually took the time to add the right amount of nuts and washers to, you know, make sure the the pod sits a bit further back behind the control plate so that the knobs sit nice and flush against the front. It just looks so clean and nice. It's the cheapest of components and probably took them just an extra couple seconds to do it, but that's usually the kind of details you can't afford when producing crazy numbers of your budget-oriented models, so that's, that's a nice touch from Fender, that's, that's nice. Well, the strings were indeed new, so I decided to just put them back on. Could have changed them, but that would have felt like a waste of a perfectly good set. I'm just hoping they survive, because you can obviously see the points where, you know, the string, like right here, was where it exits at a 90 degree angle out of the tuning post. There's a few other places on the other strings, now I can't find any, but they all have them, obviously they don't go back to the same place because I wanted to string them the right way instead of the fucking mess that this was. I'm just hoping they survive, which I believe they will. Now that is what a proper setup looks like. You can see the intonation is nothing out of the ordinary. The uh, strings clear the back of the bridge just enough, like the offenders tutorial actually says and you adjust the overall height from here so that the saddles are not unnecessarily tall and also so that the screw doesn't poke up and touches right here under the string but um while i'm here let me show you there's so little room for the bridge to rock back and forth i don't know why they made that thimble so so narrow and thimble is i don't know if people call it that that's the name fender uses on the pattern but it's so narrow so that that's about as much rocking motion i get before i touch the wall and then there's no more movement and on the back actually i'm right against the back so if i move over the strings instead of bringing the, bri the bridge a bit back you're gonna slide over the thing and then carry it back to position on the way back. And now if you look at the tuning, I'm sharp. And if I overdo it the other way and go back, well, I'm not so sharp anymore. Maybe if I do it a couple of times and well, now it just doesn't wanna go back in tune, which is not the case on, on, on my Squire, which has got a, slightly bigger hole and also yeah i know i'm making that noise but that's that's got nothing to do with that see now i'm still a bit sharp it's just i just cannot go back into it again and let me show you real quick that's that is not the case let me grab my jaguar real quick ah, probably filming my nuts at this moment Yuck. see there's 
it's quite a larger margin of error that you get there. Oof, that flagger is awful. But I can really whack it and oh, I don't know what. Oh yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's still still in tune. And, and I can really fucking go at it. And it's still in tune because all the time the bridge is moving as I'm using the B arm. Which, by the way, it doesn't poke as, as tall as the other one. Gotta go back to the fender. Yeah, probably. There you go. See how high it goes. Let me get rid of this. Oh, what a mess. It's barely unusable. Like you need to let go of the strings and come here. You can't you can do both. My hand just won't reach. I, I'll probably have to bend it because uh, otherwise it's just there's no point in having a tremolo arm there. And uh, another problem with this small thing is that I, I can't even like manually sit at a slight angle the bridge. So that I have more wiggle room on the intonation, because you can see the G is absolutely to the back. It's it's well intonated, but I could have used a little bit more room, but I just don't have it. This that's all the room I have, and I might eventually have to cut a couple loops out of the springs, because otherwise I don't know. I mean that that's and and it's not a matter of like I have a really high tune and uh, high action, so that I have to intonate it. A bit further back, I have a really low action. So, actually, if somebody decided to have a raise the action a bit, you would have to either live with poor intonation or just, you know, cut a couple loops of the spring so that you can bring the saddle even further back. If this hole was bigger, I would not have the problem. I could just you know, move it a little bit back. It's still not the proper way to do it, but at least I would have a lot better wheel room. Wiggle, that's a word. So, but yeah, other than that, I mean, it's a great looking guitar and it's in absolute perfect condition. So I'll put on the rest of the screws and have fun. I mean, everything works, by the way, like no scratchy pots, no noisy switching. This just works. Nothing rattles as I play. Like the you usually hear complaints about people, you know, rattling, which is probably why that guitar had this horseshit, which is pointless because it adds some weird break angle here and just another point of friction because this doesn't spin all that easy. It's not supposed to be there, but yeah, got my harmonics, got my rattle-free sound. Just probably gonna adjust this and maybe cut a couple loops so that I can get a, more room for intonation and maybe not go that crazy with the bar because I just don't have that much room. I can get like maybe a half tone of bending, but yeah, that's it. That turned out to be a great guitar. Finger in front of the camera. What an amateur. All right, I'm out. Yes, I'm watching Formula One. <laughs> out. Now, just to be perfectly clear, I'm not suggesting you should tilt the bridge backwards if you, you know, run out of room up here for adjustment, you know, to adjust the intonation. That's ridiculous. The brace is supposed to sit this way. The post is perpendicular to the front face of the guitar, and that's how it was designed to work, and that's how it works best in the end. All I was trying to say is, you know, trying to make the point that you start running out of room down here, you start running out of room up here, evidently somebody didn't do the right numbers. Here the intonation is perfect. I'm gonna leave it as is. I do not need to make any more adjustments. This is just fine. And I actually can give it an extra half a turn on the screw and I would bring the saddle a little bit further back, but that would bring up another problem. See how close I am to the screw underneath the string? So if I bring the saddle a little bit even further back, the screw would protrude a little bit further out of the saddle and I would also increase the angle of the screw so it would poke forward and up and touch underneath the string so I'm hitting another limit here why does that happen the diameter of the saddles is way smaller or not way smaller but 
noticeably smaller than the original ones and also the grooves are deeper so the string sits effectively closer to these screws than it does on the original design somebody didn't do the right numbers you either make the set larger or you drill the hole for the screw a bit further down i don't know something but if you're gonna mess with the original design you gotta keep these things in mind because the thing works perfect i understand why they changed it people complain people have issues setting it up they think this is more solid more sturdy whatever if you're gonna try to emulate a Mustang bridge, you gotta give it, you know, a, a, a wider diameter for the saddles. If, or, I don't know. Some, somewhere down the line, they fucked up the numbers. So, you know, down here, up here, do the right numbers. Otherwise, just leave it as is, because I never ran into any of these issues with the traditional bridge on a squire, which is, by all measures, should, should be of lower quality, but works better. This is the original design. Here they altered stuff without keeping sizes in mind. That, that's just my rambling about, you know, just leave the leave what works alone. <laughs> that's it. One last thing about the bridge, and I promise I'll drop it for good. String spacing. Not even close to being aligned with these pole pieces. Just fine up here. Wouldn't it be nice if I could do this? You know. <laughs> Be a line here, a line here. Now, yeah, stuck in one groove. Also, see how close I am to the edge of the fretboard? Don't like that. If only I had a way to do this. Just take it a bit way further away from the edge. Traditional bridge. I'm not sitting exactly at the middle. I'm a little bit to the right. A line here, a line here. Plenty of room up here. If I were to be at the middle, and stuck in that center groove, I would be running out of room. And I do not like that. Luckily, down here, I can rearrange this however the fuck I please. Superior design. I still like this better. But whatever. Yeah. And off with the bridge. Just enough. Now, this is why the treble bleed rules. <clears throat> Imagine a Jaguar having trouble below this point, even though these are 500k, not 1 million, but you know, you get the point. Even back down there, I don't know if it comes through with the, the phone, but there's still travel. Humbucker. To make a compromise because I got a humbucker and a single coil and sold just the same volume all the time. This is this just this coil. This one was dying before the treble bleed. No position. No position with humbucker. How awesome is that? Ah, one more thing I almost forgot. The string retainer. Can you see how nailed to the headstock that is and what a crazy angle those strings go at? If you don't lube that, I had to lube it, you're gonna have no no tuning stability on those two strings. Good. Which another thing that squared got right. See how it's raised away from the face of the headstock and the brake angle is just enough, and this thing, oh, well, no, there's a back there, but this thing, like I said, can go fucking nuts at it, and will always be in tune, because, you know, they got it right, they followed the original design, and they did it the way they were supposed to, so yeah, that's another thing with this square, it's got that fender beat, it just, Crazy and shouldn't be, but it is. Ah, yes, and also the tuners. Dude, every single guitar in the universe should have these tuners. At least the fenders, they look great. Why do you make them with this? This is not superior to this. This is much more stable. This is just 
self-blocking perfect okay enough sucking the squire cock i'm out